Hello, today I'm going to start with a brief update on the electric eel wheel nano, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the new prototype for the electric eel wheel classic. So the first thing you'll notice in my warehouse is this place used to be completely full, and it is now getting pretty empty. And I've uh, started ordering a new batch of the electric eel wheel nano, and I'm happy to say that uh, making several updates to those so the next batch of the electric eel wheel nano is going to have a few changes. Uh, the first one is that the reducer is going to have this ledge increased uh, so that it can't possibly rub against the case anymore uh, like it can right now. And that'll just reduce one of the, I mean, that's easy to adjust yourself just by pulling out your reducer a little bit, but by doing that, in the mold, uh, people won't get confused by that when they're starting out with their nanos. Uh, another change that we'll be making is that um, these hooks are the ones that I've been using, and they work pretty well. A lot of people have made different hooks, but overall, most people seem to continue using the originals. But um, I'm going to be using this new hook here. And it's a thinner wire, it's easier to bend, so it's a lot easier to slide on this bar. It's also more vertical, as you can see. Uh, another feature is that it um, has these the circles. They go more completely around than these do, so the yarn won't get caught on these loops as often. And they haven't in my testing, and... Um, also, they still have this little gap in there, so you can actually still slide the yarn in um, from the side. I know there were a bunch of other hook designs, and I did look into using some other ones, but um, specifically there was one that didn't clamp and it just slid, and I talked to the creator of that one, and I did try that. We actually tried three different samples from a metal bending manufacturer, and we just couldn't get it reliably made in the factory. So I ended up going with this design, which is pretty similar to the original, but with some tweaks to make it much more usable. And I'm actually quite happy with how this one performs. The other one that more people have probably been asking about than any other feature is the motor. So um, as I've said before, the vast majority of people think the motor works good. Some you know, some number of people would like it to go a little faster. Um, some people are having, you know, other issues with it, but most people like it. But um, what I'm going to be going to is a slightly larger motor. And in order to do that, there these holes here are going to change into slots on the next batch of plastic cases. And then you're going to be able to fit either the original motor or the larger motor. And I'm expecting it to always ship with the new larger motor uh, the beta testers have given me some feedback saying that the larger motor works great and you know it's it's equal or better to the original in sort of all ways it has more power it has a little bit more speed and it um, heats up less so the people who are testing it now didn't really have overheating problems with the original but um, they did say that the the new one heats up less so that's good to hear I'll make these motor the, the next batch of motors available um, as upgrade kits, so you'll be able to get one. I expect uh, the motors will be ready in maybe three or more months. Uh, it takes a while to sort of finalize all of the um, specifications. I'm going to get one more batch just to make sure that um, I get the specifications for it exactly right. And then it takes a while for the factories to make them and a while for them to ship here. So it'll still be several months, but they are coming as an upgrade kit and I'm expecting they'll be included in sort of the next batch of nanos, which will probably start selling uh, sometime next year. Now let's switch over to the Electric Eel Wheel Classic. So this is the Electric Eel Wheel Classic prototype. This is actually the second prototype for this version. I've made a bunch of changes based on feedback from my users. And um, then I took this prototype just days after I had assembled it to Rhinebeck Fiber Festival. And I got a lot of feedback from people there. And I've actually already implemented two changes um, from that. So let me give you a, a quick overview of this version of the wheel. It's uh, designed 
roughly on how the electric eel wheel nano works, except um, I was able to make a lot of upgrades to different areas um, because this is going to be you know, significantly more expensive. I sort of targeted the electric eel wheel nano for around $100. This one I'm targeting to keep the same price as the electric eel wheel 5.2, which was this size um, approximately. And um, that was priced at 260. So that's my hopeful price for this one. First off, the bobbin, 60% bigger than the electric wheel wheel 5.2. Um, another nice change is that um, I'm actually using a hook system kind of like the 5.2, um, which had sliding hooks like this, but um, I'm using um, this uh, um, oval design which actually greatly reduced the wind resistance as, or the noise from wind when the flyer is spinning at full speed. I was actually surprised how big a difference that made over the old round tube with some ribs. And the reason I have it OVO is really twofold. One is to reduce the air noise. And secondly, these hooks can't twist. Um, so these hooks are very much prototypes. Um, hooks, I just glued a piece of metal. But the final ones, the metal will be molded into the plastic similar to how I did it on the 5.2. Um, so beyond the bobbin being bigger, it's, it's threaded together now, so you can take them apart, put them together. You don't have to worry about them ever coming apart. This is the tension dial, and this dial actually has a spring in it now, and that gives it a very consistent, a consistent amount of force to turn the dial. So that's actually really nice, and it makes it just sort of feel better. Uh, another change that I've made is... Before this, on the previous prototype, I had this. Um, this is the Z and S twist dial, and previously I had it on the side, and I actually moved it to the top, and there's actually a good reason for that. One of my beta testers pointed out that if you uh, did the switch on the side, it actually sometimes moved um, the whole uh, electric eel wheel, and putting it on the top means that doesn't happen. I also used to have a three-way switch here, but multiple beta testers said that it was hard to get it into the off position. So I made this just a Z and an S um, direction and there's no off position on the switch. Uh, but if you turn it on, every one of these will come with a foot pedal and you'll be able to stop it and start it using the foot pedal. And a lot of people will use their hands on the foot pedal, their elbows or, or their foot, whatever you prefer. So this is sort of a more flexible uh, on off switch than I could have done there anyways. Um, another neat piece of feedback I got was I changed the orifice hook so that one end is big and one end is little. And what that's nice for is if you have the orifice reducer out, then the big hook will make it easy to grab the the bulky yarn that you're working with. And the little hook, if you have the orifice reducer in, which, which I don't right now, but if I did have that in, the big end wouldn't fit through, but the little end still fits through. And I'm going to make this hook longer. This is just sort of a, an example of what I'm changing there. Uh, let's see. What else? So the case on the bottom is going to be included. I still probably won't ship it with a battery because uh, it's a to ship batteries in the United States, but um, it'll fit one of the larger talent cell batteries that I've been um, suggesting people use on the website for a while now. I am still thinking about maybe a better clasping mechanism uh, instead of these screws that go into these slots and then sort of lock into place. I mean, this works pretty well, but if anybody has any ideas on how maybe I could do this, I do like the fact that if you really want to go light weight and small, you can get rid of this case and just bring your battery pack. And this kind of makes it, you know, smaller and at least more flexible in how you pack it and things. So having the, I want to keep it as an option to include the base for the battery, but the base for the battery will be included. Uh, what else is worth mentioning? Uh, I mentioned this last time, but the motor in this is much larger and more powerful than the electric eel wheel nano. It's actually a brushless motor uh, rated for about 30,000 hour, 30, hours of operation. So really the focus of this is trying to get something that's 
more like a production spinning wheel than the Nano was. And I'll just show people how it spins. Um, definitely spins up to speed. And it's quite smooth. I mean, there's not really any vibrations or things. It's not a lot of noise. I, I really expect this one to be the quietest at any given speed um, a spinning wheel I've made. So uh, based on feedback from Rhinebeck, I made two additional changes, or I'm making them. Um, one is I put rubber feet on the bottom. Um, these will actually be removable, so if you want to put it on a rubber pad and these feet get in your way, you'll be able to take off these feet. But I think most people will just keep them. It seems to work really nice. I was really surprised I hadn't tried that in a while. And one other thing I haven't quite done yet, but I'm, I'm going to redesign the model so that I can um, test this out. But I'm going to make these um, slots that the uh, bearings sit in a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to stick these pieces of felt in there. These are like special kinds of felt with a sticky backing. Or maybe I'll go without a sticky backing and just glue them in. I'm not exactly sure what the best way of adhering these will be. But um, the, the idea is that they'll have uh, the, uh, the felt in there. And then that will, I think alleviates some of the problems people have had with the Nano where they don't get the bearings to sit properly because I think they'll always sit properly if you've sort of got this felt cushion for them to sit on. So uh, hopefully with these improvements, um, we'll be really close to um, the, the final version and I'll be able to then start working on um, getting this into production Right now, the time frame for this is kind of looking like if things go smoothly, which they don't always do, but if they go smoothly, I'm, I'm hoping to have probably a Kickstarter and uh, pre-orders for this in the early 2020 um, time frame, like maybe January or February. It could get delayed, but that's sort of what I'm shooting for right now. Um, and at that point, I would hope to have... Um, the design of this far enough along that I could accurately predict where or when it's going to be finished. Like, I don't like running a Kickstarter and, and doing pre-orders until I'm sure of, or I have a reasonable expectation of when this is going to ship. Uh, and then my target for shipping, if everything aligns correctly, and I, I want to have a, you know, right now this is just a guess, but I'm hoping to have a much more accurate um, estimate by the time I run the Kickstarter would probably be sort of mid um, or maybe a little later than that in, in 2020. But all of these estimates could totally change in the future um, based on sort of feedback and I am still making changes to it so if anybody has any uh, things they'd really like uh, to see included, uh, let me know. And one last thing I just remembered, I'm going to be having caps on the end of this. I'm gonna, I still have to design those but right now the hooks just come off I'm going to have a little cap that sort of sticks on there and then the hooks will stop and um, I think that'll make it a little more user friendly so that's pretty much it for this video thanks for watching